All right, so this is a great example of a wart, a Veruca vulgaris. There are a lot of different types of warts and we could probably do a whole video just on warts um, because warts are common, we see them a lot, and they can, they can occasionally um, be diagnostically tricky, but I think um, this is a real classic one. You've got nice um, papillomatosis, that means finger-like projections of the epidermal surface. So each of these little fingers, those are, that's called papillomatosis. Above the lesion, you see a thick layer of keratin, and the keratin's kind of accentuated over the tips of these papillae. And what's nice, if you go closer, what you'll find is that the keratin here has some alternation. A lot of the keratin on the top of a wart will usually be orthokeratin, dense, compressed, pink keratin without retained um, nuclei. But when you look over the tips, what you often find is kind of stacks of parakeratosis. So see over the, over the top here, you can actually see there are retained nuclei. There's parakeratosis here. So some people call these church spires because they look like the tall steeples on top of, um, of some, uh, some older churches would have those. So that's a name that people have given before these kind of church spires of, of parakeratosis. And the parakeratosis has this tendency to kind of accentuate the tips of these uh, papillary uh, um, papillae. And then in between, you have a lot more orthokeratin. So I find that a, one useful feature. We got papillomatosis, these finger-like projections is useful. The presence of parakeratosis accentuated over the tips of reedy with a lot of areas of orthokeratin in between, that's useful. Another feature I really like for warts is hypergranulosis. So the granular layer in a wart tends to get really thick. And not, not only does it get thick, but the granules start to kind of coalesce together and become very large and thick and chunky. So large, big purple granules. Now you can see this in other settings. I just showed you in molluscum, you get um, hypergranulosis that's kind of thick and chunky sometimes. In lichen simplex chronicus from chronic scratching or rubbing, it can sometimes produce granules that look like this. So this is not a perfect finding, but that's why I'm teaching you all of these individual features because sometimes if, if a wart looks classic like this, you can diagnose it from 2X, no problem. But sometimes warts can be a little more subtle or they can be irritated and inflamed and have some atypia that could get you a little concerned for a, a squamous cancer. And so recognizing all these little features can kind of help you when you're having to sort out a more difficult case. See, even here where there's this only a little tiny papilla, you can see there's this little uh, tuft of parakeratin over top. And then in between, there's more orthokeratin. Now, when warts get really irritated, they tend to produce more of that parakeratin. And then another feature I really like for uh, warts, let's see if I can find it. Maybe it's better up here. Ah. It warts, warts don't look very pretty on your skin surface, but microscopically they're quite beautiful. And these are all those little papillae. They're just cut at a funny angle, kind of tangentially cut, so they look like little islands floating out here. But in the, within the kind of the uh, dermis, the core of these finger-like projections in the papillary dermis here, what you often see in warts are these dilated capillaries. So those dilated capillaries in the, in the, papillae, in the dermal papillae going up inside of these papillary projections is very useful, I think, um, another useful feature for warts. So you'll often see those dilated capillaries. And what will happen is that as the tips of the, uh, the papillae get traumatized or begin to kind of... Uh, convert into to parakeratosis, what you'll often see is that you'll get a little bit of blood and uh, fibrin collection that gets kind of exuded out of the tips of these papillae and caught up in the surface. See, even up here, there's a little bit of a, a papillary projection left and it's still got a dilated blood vessel in it. So those dilated vessels are useful and they often produce hemorrhage. So there you can see that's a little bit of hemorrhage and it's caught up here in the corneal layer. And what this looks like clinically is little black dots. Those little black dots you'll see in a wart, they're little, these little um, uh, hemorrhages that are coming out of the tips of each of these papillary projections. See, there's more there. There's blood, engorged vessels in a kind of a dying uh, area that's come off the tip of one of these papillae. There's a fibrin, little bits of fibrin there. So those look like little black dots clinically. And sometimes um, uh, lay people will ca call these seeds. And I think that this confusion comes from the, um, the idea that plantar warts, warts that occur on the surface of the foot are called plantar warts. But I think lay people don't recognize that, that plantar means the sole of your foot. So they think planter, like someone who plants seeds in the ground. And then they think that these little things are seeds and that these seeds will, um, will, um, you know, that you can catch the wart by touching these seeds. So even though warts are viral and actually are contagious, so they're kind of right for the wrong reason, but th these are not actually seeds. These are just little focal punctate hemorrhages that you see. But that's, I don't know if that's really why people, people will often call them seed warts, but I think that that's, that's the reason. Cause I've had people explain to me, lay people say, oh, those are little seeds in the wart. Don't touch the wart, you'll get those seeds in you. 
So anyway, uh, papillary surface projections, parakeratosis over the tips of the papillae, hemorrhage in those little um, uh, tufts of parakeratin, dilated vessels in the dermal papillae within the papillary projections, hypergranulosis, all those features for wart. And then the one other feature from low power is this what we call in towing or inward pointing of the reedy. The edges of the wart, the outer edges, have this tendency to kind of slope as they go down and point back in towards the middle of the lesion. So you can, you can see out here, this reedy, instead of going straight down, it's pointing towards the middle. These reedy over here, they're pointing back towards the middle. So this kind of inward curvature of the more peripheral reedy ridges at the outside of the wart, really useful feature. I actually find that pretty helpful if I'm struggling between, say, wart and seborrheic keratosis, which doesn't matter because they're both benign, but I think that that's a, that's a helpful way to kind of tell those apart. And in this case, we have a bonus. I think this is actually a case of a wart with an adjacent seborrheic keratosis. Because look, if I just showed you that, you'd say, oh, that's perfect seborrheic keratosis. It's got hyperpigmentation, it's got horn pseudocyst, kind of a, a flattened bottom, and then right next to it, we've got um, a wart. So a lot of times I think that some, you know sebs can kind of look like warts and vice versa, but I think here we probably really do have two lesions. If I recall, that's actually how I signed this out. I said this is a Veruca vulgaris with an adjacent seborrheic keratosis. And clinically, that was what their suspicion was, that it looked kind of like a wart and kind of like a seb. And I think that that explains why, because there are two processes here. So that was kind of just a fun case. I think warts are actually pretty to look at microscopically, um, but maybe I'm weird, but that's you know why I'm a derm path. So.